Hi, I'm David Domke. I'm chair of the Department of Communication at the University of Washington. Every once in a while I get to sit down with one of our alums and just ask them, talk with them a little bit about their work, their experiences, their kind of values, what they're trying to do and how they're going about doing that. We call these chats with the chair. I have a privilege today to talk to Alexander Diaz, who is our, <laughs> our uh, Alumni Excellence and Mentoring recipient for this year. So, Alex, nice to meet you. Nice, thanks a lot for sitting down. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Thanks for your work with our students. Absolutely. Uh, I benefited a lot from mentorship and it, just a constant reminder of, of trying to give back. Yeah. So, uh, we don't have too long, but I would quick ask you, where'd you grow up and how'd you get to the UW? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's always a, a fun icebreaker question. I, I, so my family is originally from Puerto Rico, the uh, Otisibo area, and uh, hmm. father joined the military extremely young, and I had a very different experience than the rest of them. Um, practically was born in Germany, went from Virginia to Germany to spent a little bit of time, about maybe four or five years uh, between Atlanta and Tacoma, but the rest of my upbringing was spent in Southeast Asia. Uh, I eventually graduated high school in Seoul, Korea. Hmm. And wow. from Korea, I came straight to the UW um, and have honestly been here ever since. So you graduated in 2012, mm -hmm. right? So you would have come here around 2008 or so, is that right? 2007, yeah. I, uh, I stayed an extra year um, along with my communication degree. I got involved with a couple of clubs, but I also wanted to finalize a certification that I got from uh, the business school area. Yeah, the Foster School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what all these places you've lived, be, and then you decide to come to UW? I did hear that Tacoma was in there. Yeah. In those places, but what what brought you to UW? Yeah, honestly, I think it was uh, it, it was honestly comfort. Um, I you know was the first in my family to attend university, mm. so. My only upbringing was a military community. Uh, it was, you know, maybe going to the academy. Uh, I, there was a, I had a moment where I thought I was going to be at West Point, hmm. and my family very much wanted a different road for me. Uh, my grandfather, my father, my brother were all, you know, I I in active duty or have uh, retired from the army. And so, if I was very, uh, put it lightly, gently pushed in that direction, <laughs> um, it, it was a matter of I wanted to go somewhere that I felt comfortable. Uh, that, you know, the thing with moving every two to three years is the hardest part is uh, when you don't have that community, you tend to lose the structure that really puts you there. And so I was entering a world I couldn't understand and I had no one in my community that could guide me. And, and the closest thing that worked for me was I at least was familiar with Washington. Mm. It was pretty diverse. The school itself is very diverse and it, that in itself was enough for me to be able to try to adapt. What, what, when you were at the UW, what, what drew you into uh, the Department of Communication? Yeah, uh, honestly, I was taking all the classes I could in my first two years, and I remember taking, I think it was uh, COM 201, I can't quite remember the exact class, but I remember sitting down and going through the introduction. And it was the funniest thing because I, whatever, I can't remember the exact topic, but what the professor was talking about at this time, I grew up like that. It, it was around the theme of uh, how we communicate with others and you know when you first get into a setting you're not familiar with, you do your best to try to echo what uh, some other people's interests are mm. and build rapport and through rapport you build relationships. And I think about every time I moved, I was in a new school, a new country mm. uh, with people of different ideologies, religions, backgrounds, and I was, didn't realize there was a word for that. <laughs> uh, and so I was essentially studying how I grew up. And I think uh, through other classes, I kept tapping into these interesting ways in which we adapt and communicate and are essentially, uh, uh, you know, modified by our backgrounds, media, what have you. And it, it just became an interesting subject for me because I could relate to it. Yeah. Every communication that we either are on one side of or another side shapes us in some way, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You know, we don't always know that. We know sometimes we're very apparent. It's a very apparent to us. But a lot of times it's not. 100%. So... After you graduate in 2012, is there a particular thing, anything that happens maybe in the first year or two that happens or you make happen that becomes particularly impactful for you um, for those potential students as they kind of make this journey? Was there anything along the way in that first year or two that's really been important? Yeah, um, I think probably the most important thing was I didn't say no to any opportunities or projects that came my way. Uh, the first 
you know, three years I was doing uh, TED Talk events, uh, Startup Weekend, and you know, I was either an organizer or I was helping checking people in. Uh, when there were extra projects, uh, at the time I was a contractor at Microsoft, and, and then I went on to be at a, in the, with the sales team at Twitter. So I was able to see what a launch was like at a big company like Microsoft, which wow. in and of itself at that time was changing the way they viewed technology and how they went through consumers. So the Surface, the Xbox One, mm. And so with that, I was able to really understand what it means to be with uh, a company that was one changing, to really see what it was like to go through a process of a big company and a small company. But also these extra projects allowed me to get more involved with other people in the professional community. I mean, Seattle is a big city, but the professional community is well, really well connected. And mm. uh, I think it allowed me to really understand what I liked, what I didn't like, and kind of build a, a, a North Star for me. Uh -huh. Okay, um, so you have mentioned at least seven or eight different things, <laughs> that, that <laughs> yeah. jobs that you've had. Right now you work at Uber, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah. on the marketing team and I, I work with uh, our marketing programs and partnerships. Okay, so what is there a thing or two along the way, so we're six years out now from mm -hmm. graduation, mm -hmm. where if you were at a holiday dinner and some uh, older person's like, so what have you done since you've graduated from college? <laughs> And you said, well, you know, you only got room for one thing or two things that you're going to like tout yeah. that you're really particularly proud of. And maybe it's professional, maybe it's life stuff. Absolutely. I don't know. What, what might be a thing or two? Uh, it ties into a professional thing, but to me it ties to, to both strings of professional and personal. It'd be my first month at Uber. Uh, for the longest time, I think my experience with startups kind of... Uh, will say rubbed me in a certain way with the projects I worked in and huh. that I really wanted to do something impactful for the community. Uh, I always want to kind of tie my work back to, to a benefit, whether it's for consumers or what have you. And my first month at Uber, we were launching the product in Montana. And it had never been in Montana mm. before. It was the first time many, many people who lived there had ever even experienced Uber. And I remember the first week we were prepping, getting ready to launch, and a student, I think he was at the University of Montana, but he finds out that we're the Uber crew. We looked very uh, from out of town. Uh, <laughs> and he shakes our hand and he says, thank you. And at, at first I wasn't quite sure. You know, I, I think, you know, here's someone who's about 19, he probably thinks cool tech company coming in. But that wasn't it at all. He, he was saying thank you because, you know, he had a family member that had passed away from drunk driving. Uh, and mm. to him, we we're providing something that didn't exist, didn't seem feasible. And, and so to him, it was an amazing opportunity to change the dynamic of his community. And I didn't really even think about that. Uh, and it was a little bit of shame about like how I was, I was more just, just pumped that we were doing this cool project. But it was this interesting moment of reality where what I was doing was, was just so impactful. And I, I, I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what drove me in a lot of my projects. Uh, yes, can we accomplish our business goals, but can I do something that I know is going to be uh, a benefit, like something a consumer can talk about at the end of the day, and uh, I'm extremely proud of that. That's what, that's right, that's right. Um, so, let's imagine that we're in some time warp twilight zone, and you could go back to um, the student, the UW student, Alex, uh -huh. when you were here. <laughs> right, so, not, your gra not when you're graduating, but maybe as a sophomore, mm -hmm. okay? And you're, you've got the wisdom and knowledge that you've got now, um, the school of hard knocks kind of experiences, <laughs> right? What might be a thing or two that you'd tell that student? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing would be patience. I think, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that I, I really was figuring it out as I went along. Um, I, I think it would have been having the patience and taking those vulnerable steps of really spending the time with the mentors I had at that time to just absorb and learn from a lot of what they had to offer. Uh, you know, when I when I was young, I I was doing my best to move fast, really move yeah. fast, try to absorb as much as I can, and keep going, keep going, keep going. And you know, it, it, I learned some things the hard way, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think had I taken that time to really just plan accordingly. Um, put my best foot forward and kind of, you know, still follow the goals that I'm, I, I've been following, but just kind of take that more kind of operational approach. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that would be the biggest feedback I give myself. So you said you're, when you were young, you're not very old right yes, now. That's okay. true. That's <laughs> when true. you were younger, right? When I was younger, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Sure. What, what, last question for you. What, what might you say 
in 10 years, I hope that, you know, I've, uh, that this, people might say this about me and who I am professionally. Yeah, um, I'd say if anything, my hope is that anyone I've ever worked with, um, whether it's a client, a colleague, um, you know, a customer, that at the end of the day, they know that everything I've put in my work uh, definitely had my heart behind it. Uh, and what I mean by that is I, I have always felt like the most important to me, most important thing to me is contribution. Mm -hmm. um, and what contribution means to me is being a part of something that I know my friends, my family, future kids, uh, something they can't live without. And if I can be a part of that, whatever that may be, I, I know that I would have left the, the grass a little bit greener mm. than I found it. And so I, I feel like I try to do that with a lot of the work uh, I do, whether I'm joking or smiling along the way, that's very much my structure, my, the foundation. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that's something a lot of people take away. Sure. Well, you, you interact with a lot of our students and, <laughs> and that kind of engagement with our students is just priceless for us. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, David Domke, Chair of the Department of Communication at the University of Washington. Had a chance here to sit down with Alexander Diaz, who is our 2018 Alumni Excellence and Mentoring recipient. I'm really honored and thrilled to have Alex in that space. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.